Ja, hallo. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about inspiration for music production. Uh, show you some stuff. This is mostly for beginners, perhaps uh, inspiration for intermediate producers already. I'm going to show you a program called uh, Reason. And I'm going to tell you some reasons, haha, pun intended, to uh, why, why I continued using Reason. Uh, first of all, my name is Magnus. You might know me as uh, Cactusen or Miu or Magfunction. I have uh, several aliases depending on what project I'm on. I've been working, I have education as a sound engineer. I've been working with uh, customers as uh, I have Nintendo, Sony, Warner Brothers, Samsung, ARM, Discovery Channels, to name a few. I've been making music for 13, year, 13 years, since 1998. Started out with Fast Tracker, went over to Reason, and now I use basically everything that makes cool sound. Uh, I'm going to show you Reason today, because it's a very, very good, it's a very good place to start if you want to learn how to make, if you want to develop your own musical identity and learn technical stuff, because the technical stuff is so important. It's a very important part of creating music today. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, I didn't practice to you, uh, back in the days, I didn't practice what I'm going to preach to you today. So you have to find your own way of doing stuff that you like. Uh, most of my technical skills all over. Uh, you might see, you probably saw the robot on the stage last, uh, last night. I built the entire thing from scratch myself, just using internet for knowledge. And most of the, the thinking I did behind how I go, was going to connect the parts, to develop the parts, is because of reason, because of the, the mindset it gives you. As you can... Uh, reason actually emulates hardware, so you get to understand how things are connected. And the stuff today, in the time we live now, everyone can make everything. And the question is, and you probably don't know this, if you want to start making music now, or you're just done it, doing it for a couple of months, uh, what do you want to make? And uh, the only sound I cared about in the entire world when I started out, that was to get the Armin Supersaw, the super trance sound from, uh, the 98, 99, 2000 it was the only thing I cared about. But when I started digging deeper into Fast Tracker, as I used, I used Fast Tracker from 98 to 2003. I started with Reason in 2001, so I used those two um, simultaneously for a period. But nowadays, if you want to, if you want to sound like Skrillex, you can go to YouTube and you can search Skrillex tutorial. And then you follow every single step, and you just do that. All, don't use your mind. Just follow all the steps. And for the first half, first and a half year, you're going, oh, I don't sound like Skrillex. And suddenly you sound exactly like Skrillex. And then someone guy, some guy comes to ask you, hey, could you do ambient song? And you're like, no, I can do Skrillex. So that's the only thing you can do. But if you are, if your, your intention is to learn to create your own music, music and create your own musical identity, I think Reason is a very, well, it's a very good place to start, because it forces you to be creative in new ways and it forces you to think in other ways. Like, oh, just uh, download that plugin, because that's what the YouTube tutorial. If you don't understand what a plugin does, it's just yeah, I have this distortion box right here. Okay, I download that. What is distortion? I don't know what distortion is. So, yeah, I'm going to try and persuade you into develop your own sense of music, your own style. Uh, and now I'm just, I'm actually just going to pick up some some old songs that I did in recent and uh, listen to through them and uh, see what we get. The first, uh, I don't know, uh, was many of you here in uh, The Gathering 2007? A couple of you, yeah. 
I uh, made a song called Commando, which uh, did pretty well in the, uh, the high quality music competition. This you can see here is the first sketch of the song, and uh, it sounds like. It's just basically compared to, I should have played, played the finished version, with, uh, which, which has a very great wrapper on it, which made a huge difference. But the first uh, culmination of the sound of the song was made in Reason. And I did uh, things kind of messy, but I'll go, the first thing I started with was the, the ubiquitous Amen break. Nobody's heard that before. Uh, to take it from the start. I'm not going to delve into, dive into details in Reason. I'm just going to show you. You can call, come over to the Creative Lounge later and I can show you in detail how, how, you, how you build up a song from scratch. But basically, this, basically, this is an empty song. And this is the sequencer. This is where you build your song. Reason has the rack. I've built my own rack, which, it's, which it's lo it loads every time. And this is a reverb, which creates uh, room ambience. Uh, another reverb for a large space and a small space. Some echo, also called delay. Different stuff. And the thought behind Reason is that you create all your in instruments like you go to the store and you buy them. And then you put it into your rack. And you have to connect it. But luckily now, everything is automatically connected in Reason. Um, the, the thing here is beforehand, the, I'm using version 6 of Reason, and it has some major differences compared to many guys go after my seminars and they download Reason. You can't download the, the number 6 version because it has a hardware security dongle. But I'm going to try to stick as much as possible to Reason 5. And there you actually had to use, you had to use a mixer. And then you could, now the mixer has its own app, because you have, in Reason 6, you have a new mixer, which is uh, very large and very awesome. But you could actually connect cables by yourself. And then now, uh, this synth, which, which I created here, now has its, own, has its own track here. And you can make it a region, and then you go in. And that's how it all starts. And then you fill up and fill up. So I'm going to go to a song that which is already filled, kind of. And you have here the, the, one of the drum machines. It's more like a loop player than an actual drum machine. And I made a monster bass. <laughs> And then later on, I figured out that that bass wasn't hard enough, so I made an It's a little bit more of a bass face bass. And at that time, I used, because that's one of the things you learn when, you, uh, when you're forced to connect things by yourself, I made every single instrument, every single drum on one, what a sampler is, uh, it's like an instrument, like a piano, is that, except that you load sounds, for example, a bass drum or a snare drum into it. You know, everyone has been playing with Casio keyboards, which you, know, you can reco record your own voice and you can play it on the keyboard and uh, get this girl voice and everyone, ha ah, that's fun. So that's the, actually the same part, it's a, it's a sampler that you load samples into. So it doesn't create sound, it just plays sound. This is how it all starts, and then... And then uh, we can go to the next which was, that was the first sketch of Commando. And I did some more on it, because most of the song is mixed in another program, 
I made this uh, made this song uh, while while I was going to sound engineer school. So it's kind of the process is kind of messy. So I'll show you another song later. This is just to explore stuff. This is more of uh, the resolution cr is crap, by the way. So it's not. It's much easier to work on your own uh, on computer because you can see so much more. Here you have an example of a drum machine. This one, because every single of the the slots that you see over here can load its own sample, but you can't play it in several notes on the keyboard. You can just play the one, the one pitch that it's recorded at. So. And here I've actually built the entire song because this was the comp track for the rapper, which he needed to, to write his lyrics and stuff. So this actually then, because I knew that uh, I go, was going to record a rap later in another program, but all the basics was done in reason. But I was also, also going to mix the song in another program. So the, these are the different parts. Yeah, then we have a takeoff. Um, This sounds really lame compared to the finished result. But uh, my next song is, you've probably seen this one before or heard. I'm pretty sick of it. This is a Reason 6 feature only, by the way. Uh, but I recorded all, uh, all the vocals for We Are The Bass in, uh, in Reason because it has an awesome uh, pitch corrector. Even some, uh, some stuff that didn't make it to the final. This was basically a try to get the Skrillex sound. We are the unit that moves as one. We never drop out to stereo. Blasting speakers one by one. We are the We are the unit that moves up. And many people, they know that I work in another program, and they're like, hey, how did you do that vocal and stuff? And I, when I tell them I used Reason, they're like, ah. Because every, everyone thinks that Reason sucks because they can't get fat sound of it straight away. But fat sound is hard work. It's as easy as that. You can you can download plugins as Nexus, as I told you. You can get fat sounds, but the problem is that every other person on the internet has the same fat sounds. So you're not special. It's like in the Incredi Incredibles, when everyone's special, no one is. So if you learn to create your own sounds, you will stand out. And that's what Skrillex did. He just did his own thing. And he was uh, like the prodigy did their own thing, and suddenly they were like, everyone was doing what they did. You can hear Avicii, what he has done for the Traus, the trans house community. Now everyone has a piano and a super soul layered, and everyone is making the same lame chords all the time, all the time, and it's, 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 it's all right to make that kind of music, but it's consumer, it, doesn't, it, it will die out. And if that's the only thing you can do, you're gonna have a hard time to convert into the next fad. But if you only enjoy what you do, do the stuff you love, you will always develop in your own way and you will always get the musical identity that you can uh, surf through on. You never drop out to step. For the ones that, uh, that's in that is interested. We are the unit that moves as one. We never drop out to stereo. Here I have layered the vocals, which is, um, I've recorded many bands as a sound engineer. Uh, so it's cool to pick up tricks, tips and tricks from, uh, you know, stuff that aren't usual dubstep stuff. 
Record many voices and layer them, mix them as one. This one is totally silent because it need not need no. And here you can see I had uh, the comp that I made in the other program. So many people ask me when I tell them to, you know, I want to make music, how do I start? And I tell a reason and they ask me, what do I use? And yes, I use something else. And uh, much of the stuff that I do, I could, in my other program, I couldn't do in Reason, or it takes a longer time. But Reason does so much other stuff that, that the other guys can't do. But it's more like unique features that probably, if, it will never get you to the top 20, ever. But it will, if you want to delve into the technical details like I do, it's perfect. Uh, you heard this before. And here I did, for example, I loaded up the loop player. I used a drum machine for a guitar machine, actually, because I wanted to you probably say in uh, Burnoft. I can't. Can I get some more monitoring? I can't hear crap. Can you hear anything? Something? Is it all right? More? That's good for me, at least. Yeah. But I picked up picked out small pieces of guitar and I laid them out into a pattern like a drum added some delay and it actually turned out in the in the beginning I used it just to ha have some rhythm to sing over which sounds horrible without effects by the way uh, but then I realized that, you know, this, this can work. So many of the elements in my song are made in Reason, but the important part, I'm diverting all the time, the important part, what Reason did for me, and I think it can do for so many others, is what it can teach you in how you think. So you can use Reason for two years, and then you can go on to something else, but you probably won't go back as far you will never. I met many people who, who has used Reason intensively, and then they, they moved on, they developed their sound, and they needed new tools. But they never left Reason, they just went further. It's very seldom that you leave something that you learn. If you have a tool that you learn very good, very well, you won't leave it behind. Um. It will just expand your, your sonic arsenal. This song was made in uh, 2004, when dubstep wasn't even a word. The reason I'm playing this now is that I was forced to 
because I was very interested at this time, I had made tons of trance music as well, which actually sucked, but I got the super saw sound that I've been craving for so long. And suddenly I realized, you know, there's so much other cool music that you can make, not just uh, that one sound. That happens, to, that happens to almost everybody who creates music and keeps doing it. It's like a chef. You know, everyone loves beef, almost everyone. Everyone, okay, let's say everyone loves a good meal. But when you had that meal 650,000 times, it's not as exciting anymore. Because musicians, we hear, we can listen to, yeah, I got to get my, my sound right. We hear that loop for uh, 16 hours to get it straight. So we listen, musicians listen to music in a totally different way than many others. Some guys are able to listen to their own music as a consumer. That's a very valuable, um, valuable skill, even if, it, if it's worked out in or not. That's why it's so important to be open for criticism, to not ask people, hey, do you like my song? What do you like about my song? The first, first thing you should ask is, what's wrong? Because people will probably tell you what's wrong. And then you can fix it, and it gets better. And uh, I was forced to, since I was reading a lot about musical theory, I mean, um, I was a drummer for many years. Uh, so I liked uh, odd meters, uh, time signatures, not just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I like to explore with five and seven and nine, six parts, eight, stuff like that, changing the weight of the beat. And I'm going to show you, I did, it, it, this, I did that in this song because I wanted some, I just wanted something else. And I was deliberately trying to to fool people. All the all the time keeps them guessing. Now it's four, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and then. Trying to create a good atmosphere, but the, the timing is off for many people. They can't count to six, they can only count to four. Most people that listen to straight music have hard times counting to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you, I went, uh, I haven't, this, the song isn't quite finished. I haven't decided if I'm going to use this part or not. But you can, um, and by the way, you can do all of this stuff in every program. Uh, this, is not, this is not unique to reason. But uh, I tried to, uh, to move stuff, not out of beat, but move, um, some beats to the left or the right to make a sound come earlier. This is probably a little too even for me. Because when you listen to the guitar by itself, a guitar thingy, The beat is it exactly the same as it was earlier in the song, but when you play it with the other stuff, it's you have, it's another rhythm to follow.
and uh, I was very inspired, even though this music doesn't resemble it at all, but uh, the, the, the theory behind the bands like Meshuga, Tool, and Dream Theater, if you heard about them, uh, very cool stuff, very noisy stuff, some of it, uh, but it's really technically and musically inspiring as a, almost as a science project, really. And I have here some, uh, some dubstep. This is really awkward, you are warned. I tried to do some vocal chill step and I, I actually can't sing. Uh, luckily, Reason has its own auto-tune. This was an experiment just to try out what, uh, what dubstep would sound like with kind of the trans house sound of Avicii and the guys today with the hands up claps and... <laughs> This is why autotune can't fix everything. It can fix notes, but it can't fix inherently sucky vocal performances. Uh, which is why uh, it's important to have the music at, you know, as a basement, as a foundation. Basement. I can show you how I did here. A little bit of the thinking behind the uh, dubstep drums. I have just one drum machine, which is the kick and the snare. Really simple uh, pattern. I guess I have another one here for the hi-hats. basically very straight in dubstep the the focus is seldom on 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 the drums it's on the bass that's trying to eat your everything else but the the drums are important kick snare and the sub bass many people don't know how to get the bass from uh, from their you know they know that they shall distort their synths and stuff every sound to to get more to get it more gnarly and you know the the big mouth kind of sound but to con control the bass you have to i'm going to talk about this in my next seminar uh, in about an hour or so i think quarter past six sorry Ch check the schedule uh, about how to layer sounds because the the sm the simplest waveform that we have is the sine wave it's uh, you've probably seen it in uh, you hate it, actually, from math, with the sine and cosine, sinus and cosinus. But uh, the sine is our friend, and it sounds like this. Indeed. This is a pure sub-bass. And many people think that you need fancy compressors and you need exp exp expensive hardware. You need all that shit to create cool bass. No, you need a sine wave. Already here, this, what you hear, is the foundation for all dubstep. If you get this right, everything is just, you can fill it in. 
Now this is a chill step. I admit that I haven't made any, I haven't made any uh, complete big dubstep songs in Reason. I use Reason for sound design to, um, to dubstep because I like to work with uh, samples, which I'm going to show you in my next seminar. Reason has many cool ways of, uh, of working with samples, but it's more for, for like the chameleon, as I call it, the chameleon song, which I just want to, I really don't care which genre it is. I just want it to sound good. It, I want it to be like a travel in music. And this is, I, I enjoy making dubstep and house and dance music, and I enjoy being a DJ and play out. But the stuff that really touches my heart is stuff like this. It's, uh, for those of you who have heard about uh, Spongel, Younger Brother, and many artists who are truly deep into what they do uh, in every way, and they have no, no, no one hanging over them telling, yeah, you can't play that on the dance floor. Why are you making that? You can't use that. No, just make what you want to make. So, to sum it up, if you want to be DJ Superstar, go ahead to YouTube. It's a really great way to learn, but I encourage people to don't just do what you see everyone else does. Always try to add your personal flavor to it. And of course, uh, if you like, you know, Skrillex stuff. Skrillex is the, be Skrillex is the be best example. His sound is awesome. He is a really, really, really good producer. But the, the problem is that it's taken. The Skrillex spot is taken. So even if you think that it's okay to do exactly the same as him because it sounds so awesome, you really shouldn't because it's not yours. It not, uh, it's not yours. It, it's, it, it is yours. You made it but it still wasn't from, it wasn't your idea. And that's okay, you shouldn't always, you shouldn't be like that all the time. I steal a lot myself, you know, we always get inspiration. As I've told you, I've probably given you 10 bands already that I would think, oh yeah, I have to do what they do. But I always try to give it my personal twist. So, um, yeah, that's the, the preacher, really funny speech. I hope I haven't uh, grabbed motivation from any of you, because it really is fun when you dive into it and you do exactly what you want to do and don't care about what people are telling you to do, or, yeah, make more of this, make more of that. It's the best feeling in the world. So uh, I'll be going now. I'll see you back in uh, an hour or so. Thank you very much.